What's up, Internet? It's your boy, Hot Noodle, and today we are just going to watch a bunch of comedic videos. Now, 25 one right miles after that. the other. Let's get into it. This is Guy Fury saying Guy Furious things. Let's go. That way is Sacramento. 25 miles that way is Stockton. Now, Lake Michigan is about two blocks that way, and the university is about a mile that way. But when you put down your snowboard and you're heading back from Park City on a little strip of road that's got a 25 cent car wash right across the street from a Scandinavian college and across the street from the Oregon Ballet Theater, and not too far away from where Laverne and Shirley rode their bike in the heart of the true wine country, about eight miles from the Fountain of Youth. Now, my cousin Paul lives here. Right over there is the golf course. Now, I used to work about a mile that way, right on the corner of Chinatown, where all the fishing boats come in and drop off their catch. Now, there's a lot going on in this area. You know, the witch trials and everything locals around here call this 10 pen an area they used to call the nickel in the middle of a bunch of neighborhoods North why does guy fury not know where the fuck he's going ever? like why <laughs> why is he giving why is he giving such terrible directions all the time dude? east as the locals call it in the heart of thoroughbred country or sobro as the locals call it now when you come over the singing bridge where an abandoned gas station then it turned into a pawn shop known for great agriculture especially their walnuts When I need a break from chopping down those 4,000-year-old redwoods, I turn to Lumberjack Cigarettes. <sighs> ah, the pure taste of burning leaves. When you want to feel that tar going deep into your lungs, try Lumberjack Cigarettes. Lumberjacks are swell and they make your clothes smell. Above and beneath, they leave <coughs> stains on your teeth. Pick the leaves of dead tobacco, chop them up for lumberjack, go roll up tight and lit on fire. Suck them down till you expire, so when you get yens for those carcinogens, the lumberjacks you bought taste like <laughs> cigarettes hot. Nothing better than Animaniacs, bro. There's nothing better than Animaniacs. The white guy trying to talk to black people. I'm oh, not. Bitch. No, you're not. Politics ain't funny. Say you stop picking on people. They're doing real good. Comedians just want to make people laugh. However, sure. some people get offended really easily over simple jokes. And today, we'll be watching those people get destroyed by the comedians they are trying to heckle. So let's get started with this situation with Troy Bond. This would end with the heckler crying and having to leave the show. But let's go back to where it all started. Like this crowd feels feels great, but it's, it's gonna get good soon. <laughs> If any politician did stand up in history, they could have avoided controversy. I voted for Joe Biden, but that shit didn't feel great. <laughs> Felt like I was giving grandpa the keys to the Oldsmobile <laughs> and telling him to drive to California. <laughs> that was the best of a bad situation. I give credit where credit is due. I'm probably the most pro-anti-Trump no. comic out there. That no, mother- you're not Shut the, the fuck up! No, you shut the fuck up! As a white guy trying to talk to black people. I'm no, not. Bitch, no, you're not. Yes, I wasn't. No, you were. You just you tuned were in. You were trying to. Well, I, you were trying to. For what? What are you upset about? It's not me. No, and shut up. Any black person that's trying to laugh at his fucking jokes, no. Stop having fun, motherfuckers! <laughs> Go ahead, yeah. Stop having fun. Can we get her out of water or something? Wow, are you serious? <laughs> yeah, no, no, that's what happens. No, you're white this is, this trying is, to like talk about. He's not even white, dude. He's like, <laughs> this is <laughs> this is a perfect example of what we call somebody who doesn't understand what is comedy, dude. Okay, this is somebody who doesn't understand comedy. Like, how are you gonna go to someone's show and just heckling, but then not just heckling, but just like making noise, bro? You know who makes the most amount of noise? Black women, dude. Black women makes the most noise, bro. They just make noise. They make noise. They heckle. They say dumb shit all the time, dude, for no reason. Like, they have no actual valid points, bro. Most of the time. Like, she's not arguing anything. Just like, I'm not saying anything right now. I'm just yapping. But at least I can admit when I'm in the wrong, you know? No. And you My probation officer is here now. <laughs> I don't know who the fuck you're mad at, but it's not me. No, a white person trying to make fun of black people. See, now you're crying, and I was just trying to make you laugh. No, don't do that. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> now I'm gonna make fun. I was trying to be no, empathetic. It wasn't funny. It was not. No. I don't care. You trying to like laugh at that shit? That's How funny. dare I at a comedy club? <laughs> she came here for a TED talk. Everybody knows you go to the basement for political opinion. <laughs> I don't even know what he's saying, but it just shit sounds tense. You a bitch. <laughs> Why do you think I'm doing this for a living? You think I was a football player? I'm a bitch, god damn it. <laughs> There's nothing you can say to me. I haven't said six inches from the mirror. You're the first name going in my suicide note tonight. <laughs> 
Have a good night, Kamala Harris. <laughs> Now's the time I need you on my side. No, no, that was the most racist joke ever. Oh, no, come on. I, I got like four come more in the chamber. On, <laughs> come on, man. Come no, on, come man. On, Wait, Are don't drop the scarf, man. That was three dollars at Dollar Tree, man. Man, bitch. No. <laughs> yeah, go pick up the gun she left under the chair. I'm so horny for no reason right now. <laughs> Don't bully me, I'll come, bitch! <laughs> so, after completely destroying the heckler, he would just continue with the show and even poke fun at her, further showing how he won. But, the next situation is with Sammy Obeid, who would also end up getting called racist for the jokes he was making. So let's start off with those jokes, and then we can see just how he destroys the heckler. I went to UC Berkeley, I majored in math. Yeah, alright. <laughs> Go Bears, we got a lot of Bears up in this. I majored in math, which is why I do comedy now. Now, a lot of people, a lot of people don't like math, but half of us are math people. Half of the world is technically above the 50th percentile, you know what I mean? If you don't know what that means, you're below it. That's just a simple test, right? It's a mean joke, if you know what I mean. But I write a lot of math jokes, you know what I'm saying? I'm just trying to use my degrees, pun intended. Now, people don't really respect them. Like, I can't go up to a girl at the bar like, hey girl, your legs make a triangle so right. What did the triangle say to the square when they were buying a house together? Cosign, Sammy Obey, nice to meet you. I should be in, uh, I should be in right there. But no, she's yelling at me, she's going off on a tangent. You know what I'm saying? I'm a tangent, guys. These are math jokes, they're all math jokes. They're all math jokes. All right. My family's originally from Beirut, Lebanon. I've, uh, yeah, they go Beirut, I've never been there. I've been to New York, which is a little closer. Now, in New York and on the East Coast, they call the game beer pong Beirut. I didn't know that. Yeah, they call beer pong Beirut. My friend in New York's like, hey bro, you wanna play Beirut? What kind of creepy racist question is that? He's like, come on, man, it'll be fun. I was like, all right, so I took him hostage. I didn't know how the, the house rules were. You know what I mean? But I'm part Lebanese, I'm part Palestinian, so I'm in the news all the time right now. Now, it's crazy because I'm Palestinian, my roommate is Jewish. So, <laughs> we always fight over where his room starts and mine ends, okay? So, I mean, nice. he pays more rent, but I've been there longer, you feel me, all right? You feel me? And we look the same. Now, nice. it's tricky, I understand it, it's tricky because the Jews were in Israel first a very long, long time ago. They were there, but then they left, you know, they left. It's like you leave your towel on the bench press at the gym and then you go, you know, you leave for three hours. Someone's gonna grab that towel and wrap it around their head. But the thing is, <laughs> we share culture all the time, me and my roommate. I asked him, I said, hey man, what do you like most about being Jewish? He's like, I never thought about that before. I was like, just give me something off the top of your head. So he gave me his yarmulke and uh, I'm kidding. He sold it to me. Come on, these are all fun jokes. Everybody has a good time. Bridge the cultural relations. It's very important. He sold it to me. It's good. What's that? He said you need to stop picking on people. Start doing real jokes. I'm just going to repeat what he said in a, in a hot line. He said you need to stop picking on people and start telling real jokes. What? Yeah. Why hey. are you applauding hey. yourself, you jackass? My brother. Okay, look. I'm a person, you're a person. I'm talking about real shit. Majoring in math. Did that. Palestinian Jewish roommate. Did that. Family from Beirut did that shit. This is all real shit, brother. This is all real shit. This is my life. This is my life. You don't like talking about race? Are you, you don't like talking about race? Is that your thing? It's the cheap way out. It's the cheap way out, man. Well, you know what? Race is a reality to me, man. And it's a reality to most people. And I'm making light of it. I'm making light of it, brother. Why would the majority of the crowd be booing you? If it's, did I have a turban? No, I do not have a turban. However, I will say, okay, I was, look, you had a turban growing up, I did it. Is that what you're saying? I get mistaken for being Indian all the time. And I, it, it annoys me too because there's a difference, bro. People are like, you're Indian. I'm not fucking Indian. You can't just pick any brown person and call us Indian. You're not Columbus. That one's for you. That one's for you. Ah, yeah, there's nothing wrong yeah. with being Indian. All right, wait, wait, get out. No, 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 no. I'm not stopping you. I'm stopping you. You are handled. Let him finish his set. Thank you. But that was a nice show. I'm sorry, man. Sorry. Sorry. I won't nice. pick on anyone, I won't do any more racial jokes, okay? I'm just saying, my best friend is Indian, so it's an arranged friendship, and we're very close. And I was born here in Oakland, and I was raised in Fremont. Fremont is a lot like Oakland, less urban, more turban, if you know what I mean. And that's, uh, thank you so much, my name is Samuel Bay. This is real shit, this is real shit, real shit. Thank you so much. And we have another situation with Sammy once again, nice. but this time, it's a heckler being upset over politics, and he gets completely embarrassed. You know, or we could just not bomb anyone. I think it's another alternative. Politics ain't funny. That one too, I guess you wanna... Oh, you, oh, you don't like everything that I'm talking about, basically. Is that what's going on? Pretty much. Well, That's wild, bro. A lot of these people at these heckle shows, I don't understand how they get like this. Like, you're just making noise, dude.
you're making noise at the show. It's like your opinions aren't valid at a comedy show. At a comedy show, we should be allowed to say whatever we want. At least that used to be the aspect of what comedy used to be. And then nowadays, everyone's just so sensitive. Everyone's just so, oh, don't say that. Oh, 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 don't say that. It's like, shut up. Shut the fuck up. Okay? We should be able to say whatever we want. It's comedy, man. If you get offended, don't go to a comedy club, man. Don't go to a fucking comedy club. It's pretty simple. Well, you're out of luck for the next 30 minutes. <laughs> Bro. Politics ain't funny. That's got to be the worst take I ever heard, bro. Politics is some funny shit, man. What's up? Read the room. Read the room. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That lady's having a blast. Room red. To make it clear, everybody loves political comedy, just not at the same time. That's how it works. You hear the comedian say something you like, you laugh, and then you wait till they say something you like again, and then you laugh. And then for the rest, you politely shut your freedom hole. That's how you, that's how you enjoy comedy in the US of A. But finally, we have a situation with Nimesh Patel in which the woke heckler is actually being racist. And this is just crazy because of how nonchalant Nimesh is about the whole thing. There, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Thank you. Whoa. <laughs> Who said that? <laughs> Are you white? You want? <laughs> you want to go fuck him up? <laughs> What's your name, bro? George. She speaks plenty of Indo-Vero. Sit down. It's fine. George, you're welcome to go. You think I'm kidding? We were we were so close to the end, man. We were so close to making it to the end without experiencing Boston's racist bullshit. And now, thank you, George, for leaving a fucking dis disgust in my mouth for this people named George. At least <laughs> you piece of shit. Charles, let me talk to you. I'm talking with Charles Ramsey. He's a neighbor. Uh, t walk me Let's through again go, what happened Charles. this afternoon. You, were, you, you heard screaming. I heard screaming. I'm eating my McDonald's. I uh, come outside. I see this girl going nuts trying to get out of the house. So I go on the porch. I go on the porch, and she says, help me get out. I've been, I'm, I've been in here a long time. So, you know, I figured it's a, a domestic violence dispute. So I open the door, and we can't get in that way because how the door is, it's so much that a body can't fit through only your hand. So we click the bottom and she comes out with a little girl and she says, call 911. My name is Amanda Berry. Now, did you know who that was when you when she said that? Who the fuck is Amanda Berry? And second of all, where is this? Where is this? Why is there so many people out here, dude? Like it's some sort of Olympic Games. This looks like the crack Olympics, man. What is going on? She told out me here? it didn't register until I got to call the 911. And I'm like, I'm calling the 911 for Amanda Berry. I thought this girl was dead. You know what I mean? And, and she got on the phone and she said, yes, this is me. And the detective, uh, Cook, right here, Detective Gregory Cook says, Charles, do you know who you rescued? I said, I said. Now, and when did you see, when did you see Gina? <laughs> that police sergeant gave this man PTSD, bro, just now. About, about, about five. We're good. So about five minutes after the police got here, see, that girl Amanda, told the police, I ain't just the only ones. It's some more girls up in that house. So they went up there, you know, 30, 40 deep. And when they came out, was just astonishing because I thought they were going to come up with nothing. I figured, I mean, whoever she was, and like I say, my neighbor, uh, you, you got you got the, some big testicles to pull this off, bro, because we see this dude every day. I mean, every day. How long have you lived here? I've been here a year. Okay. You should come up from? Right. I barbecue with, with this dude. We eat ribs and, and whatnot and listen to salsa music. You should come up from? And you had no indication that there was not anything egg, going on? bro, not a... We eat ribs and... When we listen to salsa music and what, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, boy, how you gonna have testicles so big? You just putting 30, 40 different women inside your crib, boy. Boy, you crazy, boy. Ah. <laughs> how you only gonna be there for a year, but you're already eating ribs and listening to salsa music or something, dude? That's, you, come on, man. Come on, man. You need more time. We need more time with our neighbors before we start digesting pork. Clue that that girl w was in that house or anybody else was in there against their will because how he is is I, he just comes out to his backyard, plays with the dogs, tinker with his cars and motorcycles, goes back in the house. So he's somebody that you look and you look away because he's not doing nothing but the, the average stuff. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Nothing exciting about him. Well, until today. <laughs> what, was, what was the reaction on the girl's faces? I can't imagine to see the sunlight to be around. Bro, I knew something was wrong when a little pretty white girl ran into a black man's arms. Something is wrong here. 
Dead giveaway. Dead Charles, giveaway. Charles, thank you very Dead much. Dead giveaway. Thank you very much for your time. And either she homeless or she got problems. That's the only reason why she run to a black man. Charles, thank, thank you for being there, man. Charles Ramsey, a neighbor, heard the screaming, took action, went and did what he needed to do. The rest is unfolding before us here on CMR. I'm going to send it back to you. That's crazy, bro. <laughs> That's wild. Oh, man, that's insane. All right, guys, well, I guess that's about it, man. I'll catch you guys in the next fucking video, man. Peace. It's your boy, Hot Noodle!